Black Panther is not just another Marvel movie. It's a colossal event, a progressive change, a downright exciting celebration. Much like Wonder Woman, this movie is raising the bar for comic book movies. Of course there are going to be some skeptics about it, but let's be real here. This movie is leaving a huge impact on people. Chadwick Boseman returns as T'Challa, Prince of Wakanda, who is to be king, and the movie is about his journey on what it means to be a great ruler for the people around him when a man named Eric Killmonger challenges him for the throne. This is perhaps the most character-driven movie of the MCU, but it also has a good amount of action in it. Boseman does really well leading his own movie, and his development was nicely handled. In fact, a lot of times you don't see T'Challa wear the Black Panther mask, but the core drama of the film is so engaging that you couldn't care less about it. This is what the best superhero movies do, focus more on the person and their journey to becoming a hero. When a friend of mine told me how Black Panther gets his powers, I didn't believe him initially, but when I saw the movie, I thought, huh, live and learn. But Bozeman also has one heck of a supporting cast to back him up. Denai Guerrera as Okoye was badass, Lupita Nyong'o was enjoyably stubborn as Nakia, and Letitia Wright was sassy and awesome as Shuri, T'Challa's smart sister. And then you have the big rival to Bozeman's Black Panther, Michael B. Jordan as Killmonger. While the MCU villains have been lackluster, I felt they were making some improvements recently with characters like the Vulture. With Killmonger, we get a great villain with much needed depth. He's charismatic, he's threatening, but he has a motive that makes you feel for him. He and T'Challa have different beliefs, and much like Civil War, you can understand both sides. After learning some dreadful things about the past, T'Challa makes some advances to become a great king and protect Wakanda from Killmonger. You also have Andy Serkis returning as Claw, and he just chews the scenery in every scene he's in. But his performance is the good kind of over the top, not the awkward kind like Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Then you have Martin Freeman returning as Everett Ross, having a slightly bigger role here. I'm iffy about his role in the film, but I feel he offers some good support to the cast. If there's one issue I have with the movie, it's that there's one fight scene and it ends with a great big dramatic OH NO reaction. But I think people would catch on that things would be alright later on. It's like when we knew Superman would be back for Justice League, even though he's been killed off in Batman v Superman. Beyond that, Black Panther was a true powerhouse movie. It was distinctly different having an out-of-this-world setting and technology. It goes to show that Marvel Studios are continuing to be inventive, and this movie was quite an accomplishment. It's a great one to start this year before we get to the next one in May. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but this is an exciting bit of news right there. <laughs> okay, just keep it together, man. Relax. Deep breaths. So, Black Panther gets my very strong approval. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now, Bill, if you would just play us out. What does that mean? To play us out? Well, we're going to televise the revolution led by Korg. Erg is going to segue into that now. To end the show? Yeah, yeah. I, I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay then, the revolution will be live. We'll do it live! F*** it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Okay then, fine. The revolution will be live. 
Also, get this man a pink slip. I don't like the way he's been treating some people here. Thing sucks. That's it. Security.